This is the beginning of a series of demos I'm going to do to demonstrate how to use machine control to manage containers on a single node. Machine control and machine D are features of system D that are already installed on your machine if you're running any modern distro, um, which you probably don't use. And um, if you're familiar with other Docker management platforms, uh, Docker, container management platforms like Docker, um, Machine control does things a little differently, and uh, depending on your situation, might be more uh, more to your liking in that it can, it's designed to manage containers a little bit more like VMs rather than uh, ephemeral bits of workload like uh, Docker does. So the one of the first things I'm going to show how to do is to create a uh, an, an image that machine control can digest. So uh, the first thing to do is this really long command here. So this is a Fedora 22 install. So we're using DNF instead of yum. Uh, you set the release version. This install route, this path here is um, is a path chosen by system D, var lib machines. And that's where it, uh, system D, that's where machine D looks for machines to run. Um, and in this case, it treats containers as machines too. What this directory is going to be is it's just going to be um, the the path to a root file system for a Fedora install. So we're just installing Fedora release, which is a uh, just the base uh, install plus a few things um, that I find useful in the container environment. So we we want System D. This is going to be uh, different from like Docker containers in that we're going to be running System D inside the container. So the container has its own init process running, it can run services, you can log into it, it's going to look a lot like a VM. Um, password, you'll, you'll see where that comes in here in a minute. Uh, VM, some IP utils, uh, compression, and a few web utilities, just, um, just so that you can actually do things inside the container environment. Uh, so I'm gonna hit that, and that's gonna take a while to complete. I'll cut and uh, start when it's all done. Okay, so all the packages got installing. There's about 157 of them, 157 of them the way I uh, configured my container environment. Um, and let's see, the size was 358 megabytes. Installed size, uh, download size is 81 megabytes. So it's, it, it, depending on your the speed of your internet connection, the speed of your disk, this can take a, a few minutes to maybe tens tens of minutes. Um, so now that we've done that, we can go to var lib machines. And now we've got a folder called F20, uh, F22 in it. We go in here, it looks like the root file system of a Fedora install. So the first thing we need to do is um, we need to set the SE Linux permissions on this um, properly. So when it, does, when it does the install from DNF, it's gonna be, all the files are gonna be labeled like they are the files in the root file system, which in this case they're not, and that throws things off. However, there is an SE Linux policy already installed to handle um, files in var lib machines. We just have to apply it. So that's done with restore con recursive on Fedora 22. This takes a little while to run while it relabels all the files, but uh, that's good. So now what we need to do is we need to set up a few things inside the container environment before we package this thing up into something that we can distribute. So um, we're going to use systemd inspawn to get inside the container environment. So that's systemd inspawn. Uh, we, and then we're going to give it the directory, which is Fedora 22. So this, by default, this drops us into a, a bash script inside the container environment. As you can see, we're, we are root. And if you do, uh, if we change here, you can see here and here, we're in the same, we're inside the container environment. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is create a non-root user for use in the container environment. Um, we're gonna make them an admin user um, and call it Fedora. Uh, then we're going to set the password. This is why we need to in, needed to install password in the previous command uh, of the Fordora user. Just choose something there. And so um, now we have a user that we can log into the container environment with. And 
So if we exit out of here, that shuts down the container environment. Now if we run that systemd inspawn command again with the dash b, which means boot this container rather than just executing bash inside the container, it's going to actually start systemd and start the services inside the container environment. So this is going to look a lot like a system boot. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> flags are in the wrong order. So as you can see now, it looks like we booted into a machine and now we're at a login prompt. Now we, you can log in with that Fedora user that you just created and with whatever password. Now you're in a full on environment. Um, yes, and by default, it, uh, systemd doesn't do anything with the network by default. So it actually, the container actually has access to the uh, network configuration of the host. This is very different from Docker where Docker to, uh, uh, creates virtual adapters and virtual private networks for containers by default. Um, so uh, we're going to be starting this up with a system uh, with a systemd inspawn service template later. But just to show you the uh, environment, so you know if we exit in here, it drops us back to the prompt. Um, if we log in and do a, if we can remember. Um, since we booted it, then this may be counterintuitive, but you actually power off, um, sudo power off. And you can see that the container actually shuts down. You see the systemd output and then the container has been shut down. So we've created our container environment here. Um, the next thing to do is to package it up. And so what we're going to do is uh, cd into there. And then I'm going to use uh, this command line. It looks a little wonky, but um, I'm going to change this to temp. So what we're doing is we're creating a tar file um, and telling it to send the output of the tar command to the pipe and then include all the files in the, in the root directory. And then we're going to do uh, XC compression on it. So uh, I'm going to hit that. This takes a little while. I'll cut when it gets done. So now that our uh, container image is created, we can, you can see it here. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to pull that image into uh, the domain of machine D using machine control. So um, machine control has um, commands similar to uh, Docker. They, they look similar to Docker anyway. Um, and uh, some, and there are a couple of pull commands here. And so um, basically what we did was we packaged up a container not using any proprietary stuff, but just tar and XZ compression, right? So if your image is being delivered as a tar ball, you use this pull tar command. It also has pull raw. You can use uh, like raw VM images. It will actually understand uh, the partition tables in raw disk images and find the root partitions in those images and boot from them. You can boot from them directly. It, can, it also understands Docker containers. So in this case, we're gonna use pull tar. So um, what, what I've done is we, you know, we created the uh, image in slash temp. I uploaded that to my web server so that I can pull it back down using pull tar. It needs to be at a URL. So we're gonna do machine control pull tar. And then let me link here. All right. And so yeah, I've already messed up. Uh, so this image is not signed and it, uh, it tries to do checksumming and GPG signing by default. These are the ways of verifying the integrity and verifying the trust of the image. <clears throat> to skip over that, you use the verify equals no option to this command. So it pulls down, downloads for machine D are rate limited. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the, what the idea is there, but um, seems like it limits it to about 100 megabits per second. So uh, it, they can download in the background if they're large images. You can press control C and machine D will continue to download those images in the background. So 
um, you can see that it's pulled down the image uh, F22 here. Now this this is where our where we built the image as well. Uh, between the cut, I removed I removed it because it's going to try uh, try to create the image in the same place as we used for building. So um, this is the this is Fedora 22 image that we just pulled down, but nothing much has changed. We just deleted it and then untarred it back to where we generated it in the first place. Um, but that just shows the how you pull the images down. So uh, once we pull the image down, to show you a little bit about what's going on in the background, we can do a butterfs sub volume list. And there are two new sub volumes here. And this is if var lib machines in your container host is a butterfs is a butterfs mount either that directly or your whole root file system is there um, it'll create butterfs snapshots for the original image that was downloaded from the source and then what it does to create your image named f22 is it takes a snapshot of this read only volume here so this allows you to create um, duplicates of your downloaded image uh, instantaneously and with zero space on disk so you can use machine control, say machine control clone F22 to F22-1. And now we have two of them. And if you go into those folders, they both contain you know, 350 megabytes of data, but they didn't use any data on disk because all they did was create another snapshot, right? So... Um, that's how you can do that. So we can do, you can also do a machine control remove F22-1. And again, all that doesn't really remove any files. It just removes that snapshot. And so, so that, that is how image versioning and snapshotting is done uh, in machine control. It's not inside machine control. It, you, it leverages um, that functionality that already exists in ButterFS. So we can do machine control start F22 and that returns immediately. It started the container in the background. We can see how that container is doing with machine control status. And just like any systemd service, containers are, no, are not special. Um, it uses this systemd inspawn service template here. You can see that it says F22 and that just allows it to uh, fill in, yeah, it's cut off in the end, but machine F22 is at the end of this line. And you can see that it's, uh, that it's running. And you can get, you know, you can see what, what interface is connected to the host on. We'll see this here in just a second. Um, if I do an IPA, you can see that it's created this VE F22. That's the virtual interface to the F22 container. And it's uh, created an IP address here. It doesn't start up a DHCP service on this interface, and so when we get into the container, it's not going to have an IP address. That's because it doesn't make any it doesn't make any assumptions about how you want things set up. So if you want things set up a certain way, you have to go into the container and set them up that way. Um, but since we use the system D inspawn template, it uses this network VETH, which tells it to create a virtual uh, Ethernet environment for the container. If you don't do this, then the container just has access to the host's uh, network configuration. So from here, we can do machine control login F22, and we get a login prompt inside the container environment. And we can log in with that user that we created before. And now we're, in, we're inside the container. This host adapter is the other end of this tunnel. And so right now, like I said, it doesn't have DHCP running on it or anything like that. And so it's not configured and we can't get out on the network. I'll show that in another demo. Um, but you can you, you can set up your, the network however you want it. It's not difficult. So, um, and I don't think PS is installed, but um, yeah. So if we uh, exit here, we get dropped back to the prompt to, to exit the, uh, the the login area. You hit control and then close bracket three times. In order to shut the container down, uh, you do machine control power off and the name of the container. This is the same as doing power off inside the container environment. The the system D and the host and the system D and the container are connected, so the host is just sending system D inside the container the power off command. 
And if we check the status, you can see that, well, now it's gone away. Um, machine control will show the, the running. Um, if you just run it with no options, it shows the running containers. So if we start this again, and then just do a machine control, you can see that F22, class container, service end spawn. Um, and then if you do a uh, list images, then you can see F22, the, the ButterFS sub volume that you can create machines from. Um, so we'll power off. And then if you don't use, do use the machine anymore, you can just do the remove. So that shows the basics of machine control and how you can use it for VM-like containers, things that are persistent. Um, also one thing, uh, another thing, let me, okay. So this just, that just reestablished the image that we uh, had. It, it caches any downloaded ones. And so basically it just snapshotted this from uh, the, the previously downloaded one. Uh, if we do a, a machine control enable F22, then what that does is it starts the container like any service in the host. And so when this host boots up, it will start this F22 container. And when it, the system D inside the container boots up, it will load any services that are enabled inside of it. So it's much more friendly than Docker as far as persistent containers on a machine that you want to load at boot and the containers have services inside them, more than one application. Docker is very uh, one app, one container centric. This allows you to run multiple services inside a container and start them at boot.